you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. Our first step is to draw a picture of this baseball as it's moving towards the batter and then after being hit is moving away from the batter. So initially in this picture we've shown the ball moving to the right and when the question says that its speed is 40 meters per second what we can say is that its initial velocity is positive 40 meters per second. Now we're assigning it a positive sign of course because the ball initially is moving to the right but when it's hit back and moves in the opposite direction we have to make sure that we note that its final velocity is actually negative and the magnitude of that velocity is the speed it's 50 meters per second so we'll fill that into the picture. Next we turn to the actual question which asks us to find the magnitude of the impulse. Now we know that impulse which is often symbolized by the letter J is equal to the change in momentum of the object. We can use the symbol delta P to represent the change in momentum but in fact the change in momentum can be rewritten since momentum is equal to mass times velocity we can write the change in momentum as mass times the final velocity minus mass times the initial velocity. And furthermore since the question is asking us for the magnitude of the impulse what we're going to do is take the absolute value of both sides of this equation. In essence whenever a question asks for magnitude only it's really asking for the absolute value. So what we'll do is we'll plug in the known mass, the final velocity, and the initial velocity, and this will indeed give us the magnitude of the impulse. And when we simplify that on our calculators, we get positive 13.5, and then the unit, because we're multiplying mass and velocity, will be kilograms multiplied by meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now on to part B, which is asking us to find the magnitude of the average force exerted by the bat on the ball if the two are in contact for 2 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. Now we know that the average force is related to the change in momentum by the following equation. In essence, we multiply the average force by the time interval, and that gives us the change in momentum. Since the question is asking for the average force, we can divide both sides of the equation by delta t. And again, since the question is asking for magnitude, we can take the absolute value of both sides of this equation. In essence, when you take the absolute value of vector quantities, the little arrows that are represented in the vector quantities disappear. So we can shave those off. Now we recall that the change in momentum is equivalent to the impulse. So all we have to do is plug in the impulse for this change in momentum and also the time interval. And when we simplify that, we should get... 6,750, and then the unit will be newtons since we're calculating the average force. Now your homework system might want you to express that as kilonewtons, so all you have to do is take the decimal point and move it over three places to the left, and that's going to give you 6.75 kilonewtons. And this would be the correct answer to part B of the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch. If you like the video, click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to respond.